All right, Catherine, welcome to Real Talk. Hey, Dean. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. So what problem is space and time solving? We solve a lot of problems. Um, kind of hard to put into short words, but uh, I would say the use cases that we solve typically fall in one of two categories. Um, one is on the Web3 side. So you have Web3 protocols like games or DeFi protocols that are starting to want to incorporate real-world off-chain data uh, into what they're doing. So um, like for a game, that's typically game telemetry, right? Like a game who is minting NFTs on chain for its winners wants to know and be able to inform uh, those mints by what's happening in game. So hmm. that's one example. And another example is like a DeFi protocol, right? Like think about like decentralized options um, on chain. So if, if you're doing that on chain, you're probably running those calculations off chain because it's too complex to run in a smart contract. So all of the options calculation pricing off chain uh, has to be connected back to your smart contract to pay somebody out. So that's one thing space and time solves. We let uh, Web3 protocols connect calculations against off chain data back to the chain in a verifiable way. Um, we've developed this novel ZK proof called Proof of SQL, um, which basically just cryptographically guarantees SQL operations. So you as a DeFi protocol can run uh, options calculations every hour uh, to get the real time price. And then when somebody's ready to make a trade, you can connect that back to a smart contract with the cryptographic guarantee that uh, it's accurate and hasn't been tampered with, which is really cool. So that's one category that a lot of our use cases fall into. And that's that's for games, DeFi, SocialFi, um, really any use case you can think of in Web3. Hmm. Um, and we work really closely with Chainlink. So hmm. so you run your calculations in space and time, you aggregate the data there, and then you connect it back to the chain through Chainlink Oracle. So it's been a really exciting partnership for us. Um, the other side of things is uh, a, a, a Web2 enterprise, right? So enterprises are starting to see the value of Web3 and that their customers are interacting with Web3 systems and interacting with the blockchain. Hmm. And it's really valuable to them to be able to connect that data from the blockchain into their systems to be able to analyze it, utilize it, aggregate it, um, and, and better understand what their customers are doing. So Space and Time also indexes uh, all major blockchains, Ethereum, Polygon, SWE, BNB Chain, Avalanche, um, and stores it in our data warehouse in real time. So an enterprise could really easily connect their source database or their source data warehouse where they're processing all of their data uh, to space and time to join it with that blockchain data uh, and use it in their existing processes. So those are really the two main categories of use cases we've seen. Uh, and, and we've got some really cool projects that are really fired up on space and time. I'd love to hear more about those projects specifically. So where are you right now? Like, what are the most exciting projects that you're working with? I, yeah, I mean, it's hard to narrow it down. Um, we we just launched our uh, product in beta yesterday, actually. Huh. So congratulations! Thank you. Yeah, we've uh, we've been in controlled release since the end of last year. We've onboarded uh, a good amount of customers, mostly in Web three, that are you know are, are early stage building and are looking to incorporate a decentralized data warehouse into their stack. So you know, a, a lot of Web three companies are realizing that. The dApps of today are largely built on centralized databases. Right. And how is your application decentralized if it's getting its data from a centralized source, right? A, a, a source that can be manipulated, tampered with, censored by a government. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the blockchain. So we've got uh, we've got one customer uh, who is creating a decentralized lending protocol. So like uh, credit scores on chain, which is really cool. It can cool. take all of the data from... Ave and other lending protocols and uh, a person's off-chain data and join it together in space and time and connect that back to a credit score on-chain. And you, as a user, know that that credit score is verifiable and was calculated accurately, even though it was calculated in an off-chain system. Um, that's one really cool use case. We're working with a lot of Web3 games, um, like I mentioned, who want to connect their game telemetry, their, their in-game activity with what's happening on-chain, on-chain events. Um, and the benefit of that is you can uh, you can reward your players in much more complex ways. It doesn't have to just cool. be you get an NFT if you won this round. It can be you get an NFT if your shot accuracy improved by this much, uh -huh. um, and we can calculate that in real time. So, lots of really cool stuff that we're that we're excited about. 
So what is a decentralized data warehouse exactly? Sure. Yeah. Let me break it down for you. It's it's uh, a complex concept that's hard to message succinctly, but sure. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, so a data warehouse is essentially just a massive database built for analytics. So if you think about a Web2 data warehouse or, or pioneers that in that space, um, it's Snowflake, Teradata, Google BigQuery, all of these massive, massive centralized companies that literally manage, uh, have built and manage all of this infrastructure to store and process that data. So space and time is the first to do that in a decentralized way. No one's tackled this challenge before. Um, so we, uh, instead of storing it on centralized servers that we control, it lives on a decentralized network that no one can control hmm. um, and no one can manipulate and no one can tamper with. So um, we we are also a, what's called an HTAP data warehouse, hybrid transactional and analytic, which is basically just combining a database that a game or a social media platform is built on that can serve really fast uh, queries and transactions in real time to power just really quick lookups that you know, a game needs to to know what's going on at any given time and analytics, right, which are the big questions that you ask about data to to aggregate it and to understand insights about what's happening in your protocol and your application, mm -hmm. whatever. So we can do that all in one system and it's fully decentralized. Now, what Space and Time does really novelly, besides being the first decentralized data warehouse, is I think I mentioned we, we built a novel ZK proof for SQL mm -hmm. operations. So every database, almost every database data warehouse in the world runs on SQL, which is, you know, structured query language that businesses have built their business processes on top of. And we have a way to compute that SQL operations were done verifiably and in, in a tamper proof way. So you put all that together and you essentially have a way to run complex business processes, business automation, business logic in an off chain system in an affordable way, not spending more gas on chain and connect it back to the chain. So, and the zero knowledge part is a big deal for crypto folks out there. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the biggest buzzword in the year of the year. So but for uh, good reason, right? For good reason. There's totally. no, there's no PII personally identifying information that's exposed with a ZK proof. So exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's actually really important to specifically our web two enterprise customers, sure. right? So the, the decentralization and trustlessness side of things is, is really important to our web three customers. Obviously that's what they care about. They want to be able to leverage off chain compute, to leverage an off chain data system without breaking the zero trust model of blockchain. Our enterprise customers though, they don't really care about that. They don't, they don't care about decentralization because they want it centralized, right? They just they want, want the money. Yeah, they want to control. <laughs> they want to control their own data, which you know is a valid use case as well. Right. So we uh, we've partnered with Sotero, who who's a leader in data security, to actually provide in database encryption, which is I mean completely novel and revolutionary, even in the Web two data space. Like sure. Very few databases are doing that. So it's it's a way to really secure and privatize that data, and so enterprises who want you know, data verifiability, they want to know that their operations were run correctly, that the data they're getting is accurate, that nobody in their in their company even is tampering with it and messing something up. Uh, they can encrypt it, keep it private, and then use proof of SQL on top of it to make sure that it's it's done verifiably. So let's talk about the physical world. So a lot of what you've talked about relates to IOTEX's web stream, mm -hmm. which is really about connecting real world data in a secure way to smart contract applications. Mm -hmm. So how are you looking at the real world? Do you have use cases with physical IoT devices? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're, always, uh, we're always looking to get more into that space. I think, I think MachineFi is like such an untapped space in Web3. You know, so much of Web3 initially at least was, was retail focused mm -hmm. and, and DeFi and gaming and really cool stuff. But it, it's really nice to see over the last couple of years it move into more truly real world material use cases uh, like machine fi. So, um, you know, there's there's a really cool project that uh, I've fam I'm familiar with uh, called React Network. They're mm -hmm. building a tokenized energy grid. Um, and, and that was like one of the first times that I saw Web3 and saw tokenization solving a problem that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I had that I, I, you know, a lot of people say Web3 is just like a, a solution looking for a problem. Right. And obviously I don't believe that. I, I see real world use cases that it's solving all the time. But 
uh, learning about React Network was so interesting because um, my parents live in Dallas and a couple years back, they there was a big freeze in Dallas and all of the power went out mm. and they were without power for like three days, it's freezing outside, couldn't run anything. It was horrible. And everyone in Texas was affected. Mm -hmm. And that issue came about because the Texas power grid is so centralized. Huh. It's controlled by one company. That company is not connected to any of the national power grid. It only services Texas. And when they calculate something wrong, when they predict something wrong, it has catastrophic yes. implications. And, and I mean, a lot of people died. It, it's really terrible. Yeah. So seeing a project like React Network, who is looking to decentralize uh, the energy grid, is is so revolutionary and mind-blowing. And, and there's dozens of applications for that across IoT. And where space and time comes into that is we can connect all of the data from those sensors, weather sensors, um, you know, car telemetry, anything, anything in the real world, uh, into our database, join it with blockchain data, with that token token data that these companies are generating, um, and provide it back to them in a verifiable way. So yeah, it's a space we're really excited about and, and looking to get into more. And this is the beauty of DPEN. It's really affecting people in the real world. Mm -hmm. Crypto has been mostly limited to financial applications, and it's hard to see how it actually affects real people in their real lives. Yeah. But in my view, DPEN is really bringing this technology into people's lives Absolutely. and potentially saving lives, as you mentioned. Absolutely. So let me just hear your take on the broader DPIN space and machine fi space. Mm -hmm. How do you see the sector right now in terms of adoption? Where do you think it's going to go in the next couple of years? Yeah. I mean, I think in one word, potential, right? I think it, it's such a, an illustration of how much potential blockchain technology has for transformative change across all industries. And there's so much to be done there. Um, and a lot of it's untapped, I think. You know, we have cool projects like IOTEX who are building the necessary infrastructure to get these projects up and running. And I think one thing that uh, Machine Fi and DPIN have in common with DeFi and GameFi and all the other verticals in Web3 is data, mm. right? Mm. Everything in Web3, everything in the world, everything in the digital world is data driven. Mm. So companies like Space and Time who are building alongside companies like IOTEX, building this essential infrastructure to be able to manage that data, do it in a secure way, do it in a verifiable way, are uh, are really essential and and really going to drive, I think, all all of this uh, development and progress in spaces like DeepIn. So, how do you see IoTex and Space and Time working together? Yeah, I think uh, I think there's a lot of uh, room for partnership and integration there. Um, I think I IoTex is making it easier for developers to deploy. Uh, IoT use cases on the blockchain and space and time can kind of sit behind that and manage all of that data. Like I said, the on-chain data happening from the tokenization, the off-chain data being generated from sensors uh, and, and off-chain systems and bring that all together uh, for developers to use in tandem with IoTex. Could be a really cool use case. Yeah, absolutely. So these are very difficult to explain concepts to the general public, right? And, and one of our challenges is how do we communicate these fairly complex ideas to the general public eventually. Yeah. Do you do you have any insights on how to break these ideas down so they're digestible for totally. the average person? That that is such a challenge faced by web3 just across the board and and something I don't think we've really gotten right yet. No. So, um yeah, I I I oversee all of our content and messaging for space and time do a lot of our product marketing. So this is my this is my daily challenge yeah. for sure. And I think um the, the easiest way to do it is to start with what it solves, right? Mm. Start from the, start backwards. So uh, if I were to go like to say my parents who are, you know, not plugged into the space at all and, and start talking about a tokenized energy grid, their eyes would probably glaze over. They'd have no <laughs> idea what I'm talking about. Right. But if I started with, hey, you guys remember when you were without power for three days and, you know, you were super mad at the Texas power grid company, blah, blah, blah. This is something that can solve that that is something that they could connect with. So uh, what, what we, we try to do at Space and Time and, and what I, I like to see in Web3 companies is, is really figuring out who you're talking to, hmm. what problems they're experiencing, where you can fill that in and how it's gonna make their lives better. Um, and and that's, just, that's just marketing in general, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and 
retail's figured that out, Web 2's figured that out, and, and Web 3 is starting to. Um, we've got some really cool marketing teams across Web 3 that are, are really able to hammer that messaging home. But like you said, it's complex tech. It's hard to package succinctly. So you just got to bring the human factor into it and, and know who you're talking to, know what you're solving for them, and understand why they would want to use it. Which is a lot easier when you're talking about energy grids. And Absolutely. Like, yeah. And losing real power. world use cases. Real yeah. World use cases. Totally. Well, Catherine, thanks so much for your time and insights. This has been great. Thank you, Dean. It's awesome talking to you.